Tell. It's a family model. Are you ready, Jerry? I'm ready. Just want to make sure you're ready, brother. Here it is. Show me the money. That some Canadian households, and it tends to be the better off households, do have quite a lot of money that they've saved because there hasn't been that much to do in the pandemic. I'm here at Young Dundas Square. The Canadian Payroll Association released an interesting survey today that shows the majority of Canadians are still living paycheck to paycheck. So if you fall into that category, don't worry, you're not alone. And certainly it would be great if that money could go towards driving our recovery. And I want to make an offer now to all of your listeners. If people have ideas on how the government can act to help unlock that preloaded stimulus, I am very, very interested. Maybe, as Doug Porter was suggesting, it happens by itself. Get ready, everybody. He's about to do something stupid. That's the best case scenario for me. But if people have ideas on how we can really, you know, try to unleash that, and particularly unleash it in the parts of the Canadian economy that really need support, tourism, hospitality, domestic services, uh, let me know. I have got a quick way for us to literally be showered with money. Good. That's where the penny thing went. Bonus. Um, we know the spending has been high. The deficit is enormous, uh, and it will continue to be enormous for many, many years, even as it comes down. How can you reassure Canadians that we will get this under control, that we're not entering a new era uh, where we're creating systemic holes, um, budgetary problems that will last? In other words, where temporary spending becomes permanent? Um, well, by doing exactly what you just said, Amanda. Um, we were very clear in the fall economic statement, and I am going to be very clear in my stewardship of the economy, that there is a big difference between the temporary one-off spending we need to get through the coronavirus and to get through and, you know, to minimize the scarring that we experience as we fight COVID. And then the temporary spending we need to do to get out of the coronavirus recession. That is in one category, and that is entirely different from permanent built-in structural spending. We are going to be very disciplined about that, and we need to be disciplined about that.